Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now I'll ask you, how do you translate Alhamdulillah? Call it out. Praise to Allah, I've heard that before. What else? Any other suggestions for translation? Thanks, Thanks Allah. Very good. You know, the first thing I want to share with you is that sometimes in Arabic, there's a word. And in English, you cannot translate it with one word. It's really, really hard. And sometimes it's impossible. Because this one word in Arabic means at least two things in English that are two very different things. As a matter of fact, hamd in Arabic means, if I was to try to make it easy, I would say it means praise and it means thanks. Two things at the same time. Praise and thanks. Now let's try to understand the difference between those two because they're not the same. When you see a nice car, drive by and you say, wow, nice car. What did you just do? You did praise. You don't pat the car and say, thank you, BMW. You don't do that. There's a difference. You, you praised it because it's beautiful or it's got great performance or you saw a, a, a sports game and you saw the athlete perform really well and you praise the athlete. You don't thank the athlete, you only praise them. There's a difference. Now, on the other hand, there's thanks. Like when someone does you a favor, you will do what? Thanks. Thank. It's a different context. And sometimes we praise without thanking. And sometimes we thank without praising. I'll give you an example of praise without thanking. You can praise a beautiful mountain, but you don't thank the mountain, you thank Allah. You praise the ocean and how beautiful it looks, but you're not going to thank the ocean, you understand? But on the other hand, what about if you thank someone, but you still don't what? You still don't praise them. Is that possible? Yeah, it actually is possible, and it happens. And I'll give you some examples from the Qur'an of when that happens. You have the case of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, who's, who, by the way, whose house was he raised in? And it's kind of embarrassing to call it a house, it was kind of bigger than a house, but... Firaun's. And Firaun raised him, fed him, educated him, protected him his entire life. Yes? And when he came back to Firaun, Firaun said, Alam nurabbika fina walida. Didn't we raise you as a newborn? And he reminded him of all the things he did for him. How can you talk to me like this? I did all of these things for you. So now Musa alayhi salam acknowledges, وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيَّا That is in fact a favor you did for me. You did do me a big favor. When you tell someone you've done me a big favor, what have you just done? You've thanked them. But you will never find Musa alayhi salam doing what? That's impossible. So he's thanking him but not praising him. So praise and thanks are two different things, yes? I'll give you one more quick example. Allah says in the Qur'an that you have to be grateful to Him, but He also says, anishkur li wali walidik. Right? Be grateful to me and to be grateful to both of your parents. Now let's talk a little bit about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam has a father, and some argue uncle, but let's go with the father argument for a, sec, for a moment. Azar, who makes idols and is really upset with Ibrahim alayhi salam because he refuses to worship idols. Now you're, he's his father, and we know that you have to be grateful to your parents, yes or no? Yeah, he's going to be grateful to his dad, but he certainly won't what? He, won't, he can't praise what he does. He can't praise him. So the point, the first point I want you to understand is that hamd means praise and thanks. And they go together in this one word. But we know that praise by itself is something else, and thanks by itself is? Something else. Now if, if, the, if the Qur'an said, Al-Madhu Lillah, praise belongs to Allah. That would have been an okay translation, because Madh actually means praise. If it said, Al-Thana'u Lillah, another word in Arabic for more elaborate praise, it belongs to Allah, fine. We could have translated it, praise belongs to Allah, or praise is for Allah. If it said, Al-Shukru Lillah, or like I think you guys call it Shukur, right? Shukur, Shukur. So, Ashukru lillah. Then you could have said, thanks belongs to Allah. Thanks to Allah. But it doesn't say al madhu lillah. It doesn't say al thanau lillah. It doesn't say al shukru lillah. It says what? Alhamdulillah. So Allah is combining two things together. Now, that's a really important concept before we move on. Why combine these two things together? Because if we, if we only said praise belongs to Allah, then it, could, it might mean you're praising Him, but at the same time you are not necessarily thanking Him. And it could be that if you said a shukru lillah only, then you're thanking him, but you're not necessarily praising him. But 
Our attitude towards Allah is more comprehensive than that. So Allah chose the best possible word, which is Alhamdulillah, to let us know that whatever Allah does, we have to have two attitudes at the same time. There are two things that have to go on in my head when I say Alhamdulillah. Whatever I said Alhamdulillah to, hey, how was your flight? Alhamdulillah. Two things. What are those two things? I'm praising Allah for the flight. And I'm thanking Allah for the flight. Now what do we do? Alhamdulillah, my back hurts. <laughs> right? I mean, Alhamdulillah, but the flight attendant was really mean. So we say Alhamdulillah, then we undo it. Or so you see somebody in a bad mood, Hey, what's going on? You okay? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> the meaning of it is, that you have to find reason to praise Allah. You have to mentally prepare yourself to have reason, genuine reason, to praise Allah. And then thank Him on top of that. Be grateful on top of that. When you praise someone, you have a positive attitude. You're not complaining. You're not looking at the negative, you're looking at the positive. If you're looking at the positive, then it's, that it's easy for you to do hamd. If you're looking at the negative, then it's actually practically impossible for you to do hamd. You know the point I was trying to get across? It was just this. That our religion begins with a positive attitude. Optimism is part of our faith. Pessimistic people that are always negative, that are always looking at what's wrong, what's wrong with our community, what's wrong with our masjid, what's wrong with our government, what's wrong with our, my friends, what's wrong with our family, what's wrong with my in-laws, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with my health, what's wrong with my job. They don't understand what they're saying when they stand in front of Allah and say what? Alhamdulillah. It's a change of thought. It's a complete change in attitude. That's the first thing I want to get across about this fundamental difference. There's another thing. Some ulama argue, some scholars argue that the word hamd actually necessarily means genuine, sincere praise and thanks. Now that's important because if a police officer stops me and I know I was speeding, and as soon as he comes over, I say, nice uniform. Uh, I'm praising him, but I'm not praising him because he's got a nice uniform. I'm praising him because I'd like to save some money. <laughs> you understand? So you praise, but you didn't praise for genuine reasons. You understand? Or for example, the husband told the wife, I'll be home by 8 o'clock. Then he showed up at 11.30. And as soon as he walked in, she was standing there and she looks like there's smoke coming out of her head. And he says, you look really beautiful today. <laughs> now he praised her. But it's hard to believe that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? But hamd necessitates that the praise is what? Genuine. And the gratitude is genuine. It's genuine. That's the other, that's the, you know, now let's talk, we talked a lot about praise, but I didn't talk enough about gratitude. I'll just say one thing about gratitude before moving on. And that is that gratitude, thanks, is actually a reaction. Thanks is a reaction. In other words, if I help you fix your car, by the time we're done, you're going to say, thank you. If you needed help translating something and I translated it for you, you're gonna say, thank you. Something has to be done for me, and then I react by saying, thank you. So you could say that thank you or thanks is a reaction, yes? It's a reaction, but it's only a reaction if you accept that somebody did you a favor. Isn't that the case? Somebody has to do you a favor before you say thank you. And it, maybe somebody's doing something for you and you have no idea they're doing it for you. They have no clue. You, you have no idea. You're never going to thank them. Because you never accepted it, you never acknowledged it, or you never even knew. You never even knew. Now when Allah says hamd, He actually did not use the word shukr. And by not using the word shukr, actually, the gratitude to Allah is deserving of Him, whether you're aware of what He's doing for you, or you're not aware of what He's doing for you. That's actually a difference between shukr and hamd in a sense. It's not only praise, but it's gratitude that is not limited to a reaction. You don't have to like know, like, why should I do hamd of Allah? People say, why should I, do, why should I thank Allah? I get those questions sometimes. Why should I thank Allah? I'm like... Even if I didn't tell you any reason, you should still be thanking Allah. Because He didn't ask for shukr. 
He asked for what first? Or he declared what first? Actually, the hamd belonging to Allah. That's the first thing. Shukr will come later. That's another conversation. Alhamdu is a noun. Belongs to Allah. A noun belongs to Allah. As opposed to using what? A verb. Now let me tell you what a verb would have been. Ahmadullah, Nahmadullah, Ihmadullah. I'll give you three options. I praise Allah. I praise and thank Allah. When I said that, who's the doer? I am. And what tense did I use? I praise and thank Allah. What tense? Did I use the past tense or the present tense or the future tense? I use the present tense. When I say we praise Allah, what tense did I use? Uh, we praise Allah. Right now. And who's the doer? We are. When I command you, praise Allah, then who's supposed to be the doer? You are. Yes? Now let me tell you something. Allah chose a, a, a noun and He refused to use a Verb, Allah says, praise belongs to Allah. Now what, may, what difference does it make? You know what difference it makes? It means that the praise of Allah is timeless. Because if you put it in a verb, it would have been either past tense or present tense or future tense. And if you said, I praise Allah, then that means it's happening right now, but it's no proof that it was happening in the past, and there's no guarantee it will happen in the future. So first of all, by using Alhamdulillah, Allah made His praise what? Timeless. Remember, nouns are what? Timeless. But what else are nouns? Nouns are not only timeless, what else are they? They don't need a... They don't need a doer. So by using Alhamdulillah, Allah is telling you and me that He doesn't need you to do the praise. Because there's no, I praise Allah. Because if I don't exist, then it won't, a verb won't happen if I don't, I'm not there. If I say, we praise Allah, or even if you said everything praises Allah, then it depends on everything, because they're the doer. But Allah does not need anyone to do His praise. He doesn't need anyone to do His praise. He's independent. فَهُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ He's praised in and of Himself. In and of Himself. And so He captures His lack of need to be praised in just Alhamdulillah. So when people ask the question, why does Allah want me to praise Him? Why does God want me to pray to Him and praise Him and thank Him? You don't know Qur'an, do you? Because it started with the fact that he doesn't need it. He started with Alhamdulillah. It already answered that question. That question doesn't even exist anymore. Just because we say what? Alhamdulillah. Now imagine, you know, there are places in the Qur'an where Allah commands you. U'budu. U'budu. Ittaqu. Have taqwa. You know, worship, etc. But he doesn't say, Ihmadu. Praise. Now, when you say to someone, praise, or eat, or drink, or sleep, etc. When you give a command, then you know what that is, right? There's only two things that can happen. If I tell someone to do something, there are only two possibilities. Either they will do it, or they won't do it. If Allah tells me, and He tells us to have taqwa. Do we always have taqwa? He told us to have taqwa, but do we always have taqwa? No. Sometimes we have it, and sometimes we don't. If He says, ihmadu, praise then praise would exist, or praise and thanks would exist when we do it, and it would not exist when we don't do it, or when we're unaware, or when we're heedless. So he did not issue a command, because when you issue a command, whether or not it will happen is in the other court. The ball is in your court, not with Allah. He does not need you, or depend on you, or wait on you for hamd to exist. It's already there in and of itself. Let me recite Fatiha incorrectly, and you tell me what's missing. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi. You know that Rabb is one of the names of Allah, yes? So why even mention the word Allah? You could just mention, and he, he has lots of names. He has lots of names. And Fatiha has a number of them. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik. Why even mention Allah? You could say, Alhamdulillah, Khaliq. Hamd belongs to the Creator. You could say, Alhamdulillah, Rahman. Hamd belongs to the most merciful, the most loving and caring. You could say, Alhamdulillah, Hakim. Hamd belongs to the most wise, isn't it? Isn't, those are all correct. Why use the word Allah? The thing is, every one of those is a description of one of the attributes of Allah, isn't it? So when you say that Hamd belongs to the Creator, the only thing you appreciated is what? That He's a Creator. But you said you appreciated nothing about His wisdom, or His knowledge, or His mercy, or His guidance. If you said, Alhamdulillah, you know, if you said Alhamdulillah Hakim, Ham belongs to Al-Hakim, the wise. The only thing you're acknowledging is what? His wisdom. But you didn't acknowledge anything else. 
You didn't acknowledge anything else. How do you praise Allah in one word by acknowledging every one of His attributes, the ones you know and the ones you don't know, the ones you can think about and the ones you can't even think about, you cover all of them all in one word. The only option left for you is what? Alhamdulillah. It's the only option left. It's incredible. Without it, something would be missing. Something from the hamd of Allah would be missing. Now Allah is the, the proper name of Allah. It is the title of Allah, the proper name of Allah. And names are very important in an introduction, aren't they? If you meet someone for the first time, you know, uh, you would say, Saya Norman Ali Khan, Dari USA, Beras Al Dari Pakistan, right? You would say something like that. But when you, when you did do, talk to someone, you introduce that to, uh, introduce yourself to them with your name. Somebody comes up to you, Assalamu alaikum, my name is Abdul Rahman. You say, Walaikum salam, I'm an engineer. <laughs> You're a strange person. <laughs> If you do that, when you introduce yourself, you don't introduce yourself with your description, you introduce yourself with your name. Fatiha is Allah introducing Himself. So the name is critical. Names are important, especially when it comes to an introduction. When you don't say the name, there could be confusion. So when you, if you just say, I'm an, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, somebody in the world can have the wrong concept of God. To them, Rabb could be someone else. If Fatiha is supposed to clarify who this Rabb is, then it should begin with the proper name. And that's why it's critical to have what? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So now, finally, the other benefit of Alhamd. It's as opposed to Hamdun Lillahi. Why, why put the Al there? Al is, by the way, not necessarily translated as the in this case. It's not the praise belongs to Allah. In a sense, it is all praise. Or the ultimate praise belongs to Allah. And all the ultimate thanks belongs to Allah. And that's also very powerful. Because at the end of the day, we do praise and thank other than Allah too. We do. As a matter of fact, the name of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Muhammad, from the same origin, Hamd. His name is from the same origin. And it's an ism maf'ul, which means someone who has a lot of hamd done to him. Someone who you do a lot of hamd of is called Muhammad. Actually, Muhammad means that we do a lot of hamd of him. Now the thing is, the ultimate hamd only belongs to Allah. But some hamd can belong to others. Some hamd, some praise and thanks can belong to others. By the way, will there be cases when you thank and praise someone? Technically, you will have done what then? You've done hamd. And somebody comes on, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, ya akhi. Alhamdulillah. We're like, uh, yeah. But you know, like for example, if somebody helps me, somebody picks me up from the airport, you know, and I praise how quickly they got there, and I'm, I'm thanking them for the ride. Right? When I do that, I did do hamd of them. But you know what? At the end of the day, I know that that is a blessing from who? So ultimately, it is still going back to Allah, it doesn't, you don't say, I only believe in Allah, that's why I'm really mean to people, to protect my tawheed. <laughs> I don't want to do any shirk, you know, that's why I don't appreciate people. I only appreciate Allah. You're silly. Allah has clarified that problem already by using the al in alhamdulillah. So here's the last thing. I'll, I'll, I'll end where I started. When we say alhamdulillah, what mindset does it produce inside a person? It produces a mindset that is positive. Our book begins with an attitude that is positive. So when people accuse the Qur'an of being a book that makes others depressed, that is an angry God that wants to punish and makes everything haram and makes things difficult, etc, etc, etc. They bring this entire view to the book of Allah that is so unfair to the book of Allah because it actually began, it started with the right lens and through that lens you see the entire religion. You know your first steps, the you know, first impression is everything. The first impression of the Qur'an begins with hamd. Alhamdulillah. Our impression of Allah is that He is going to constantly do things and He Himself, whether we acknowledge anything He does or not, He Himself is going to be worthy of praise and He's going to be worthy of thanks. And is not even dependent on us. Whether we do it or not, it's still going to be there.